Welcome back. In today's session, I will be showing you the five tips you must know if you're using Canvas for your classes. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Hey, my name is Bhumani Kola. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about educational tools, tips, and technology. So if you don't want to miss out on all the fun, please make sure you subscribe. Tip number one, how to activate your immersive reader. Immersive reader is a free interactive reading tool that helps students with reading, comprehension, and grammar skills. But most importantly, it makes your Canvas pages, assignments accessible to students at different levels. So let's go ahead and take a look how to turn this on. So here I am on my Canvas page. I'm going to go ahead and click on my algebra class. And as you can see, this is my home page and I do not have an option for immersive reader. To go ahead and activate that, I'm going to click on my account where you have your profile picture all the way to the left hand corner, top left hand corner. I'm going to scroll down to my settings. Scroll all the way down until you find feature options and make sure you look for Microsoft Immersive Reader. And as you can see, it has been disabled. I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Make sure there's a green check mark right next to it. Go back to my dashboard. Click on the same course and here I have my immersive reader option. So let's go ahead and try this. And as you can see, the distractions have been taken away. I can go ahead and play this. I can increase the font size. I can increase the spacing or decrease the spacing. I can change the font. I can change the background color depending on my needs. And let me go back and make it to white. And I can also click on my grammar options. Here are all the nouns, verbs, adjectives. I can also have syllables on the top. I can go ahead and click on reading preferences, the rightmost book icon. And here I can have line focus. I can enable or disable it. I have the picture dictionary turned on. I can turn it on and turn it off. But let me show you what that does. Math. There you go. That's a picture of math. Class, that's a picture of class. Now let's go back to reading preferences. And here you can change your entire document or word into all these 64, I'm guessing, 64 different languages. Let's go ahead and pick one language. Let me go ahead and pick Greek. I'm going to check word for now. So if I click on college, so college in Greek is, I don't know if that's right. What about class? Oh, math. Oh, there you go. And now let's go back to my reading preferences and change the entire document into Greek. And then let's go ahead and read this in Greek. I heard my name, so that's correct. So that's how you activate your immersive reader inside your canvas. Once done, go back and exit. And here you are. Did you know that there is a convenient way to share your modules, your course pages, your quizzes to other instructors inside Canvas using send to option? Let's go ahead and check that out. So here I am on my Canvas page. I'm going to go ahead and open up my stats class. I'm going to click on my modules. If you want to share the entire module with any instructor or your co-instructor in your institution, all you have to do is let me minimize the module. Click on these three ellipses and click on send to option and type in the email address. Today, I want to go ahead and demonstrate by sending a page. So let me see which page do I want to send. I want to go ahead and send class calculator page to myself. To do that, I scroll all the way to the right hand side. Click on these three ellipses and I am going to pick send to. And here I'm going to go ahead and type in my name. And I'm going to click send. Keep in mind, you can share a module, a page, your quiz, whatever is inside your course content. You can simply use the send to option and send it to your co-instructors. And it says content share started successfully. Let me go ahead and close that. And once your content has been shared, you can see on the left hand side, I have one, a number one popped up on my account. Let's go ahead and click on that. And to view your shared content, you click on your account and click on shared content. And as you can see, the class calculator has been shared to me by me. 
and you have an option to click on these three ellipses, preview, import it. You have an option to import it to any course you want or let me cancel this. Once you have viewed it, you have an option to simply remove it. Tip number three is drag and drop your events inside your calendar. So let's go ahead and take a look how that's done. So here I am in my calendar and let's just say I want to change the due date for this 1.1b assignment. Instead of going into the assignment and changing the due date, all I can do is to drag it and drop it wherever I want. Let's just say I want to change the due date from September 6th to December. So all the way on the right hand corner, I'm going to scroll to December, drag this and drop it, uh, let's just say December 13th. And now let's go ahead and take a look if that particular homework has been dropped into December 13th. So I'm gonna scroll October, November, December uh, 13th, where is it? There you go. I have 1.1b in December, uh, on December 13th. Now let me go back. I don't want this on December 13th. I'm going to go ahead, put it back in September. I'm gonna go back all the way to September. I think it was September 6th. And I'm gonna scroll all the way to September, September 6th. So you can actually use your drag and drop option inside, or you can scroll to different month on the right hand side, drag it and drop it. Now let me go back and make sure that's in my calendar. There you go, 1.16 is back in my calendar. Again, you have an option to drag and drop right here, or you can drag and drop right here on the top right hand corner. You can change it from this month to next month simply by dragging and dropping. How cool is that? Did you accidentally delete something in your canvas and you don't know how to restore it? Tip number four is to how to restore all your accidentally deleted files in Canvas. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here I am on my Canvas page. I am going to pick my algebra class again. And let's just say you accidentally deleted something. To restore what you have deleted, all you have to do is to go all the way on the top, backslash, and click undelete as simple as that and press enter and this gives you the list of all the items that you have deleted in your canvas and you have an option to restore them tip number five cross listing are you teaching the same course multiple sections then this tip is just for you cross listing helps you combine all your sections into one parent section and once you're cross-listed, anything you update in your parent section will be trickled down to your child sections. Now you do have an option to have different due dates, assignments, different discussions, different announcements. You do have that flexibility. But keep in mind, you should not cross-list your section if you have any student submissions. Yes, the grades will be transferred, but the submissions will be lost. So if you are teaching multiple sections, you might want to cross list before you have any student submissions. So you're not copying the same content into multiple sections. So let's go ahead and take a look on how this is done. So here I am in my Canvas course and I've created a couple of courses that says child one, parent one, child two, parent two. So my goal here is to cross list child one into parent one, child one into parent one. To do that, I first have to click on the parent course and I copy the course number. So the course number here is 70248, control C. I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to my child course. Canvas likes to call parent and child, so I've used the same verbiage so it's easy for you to understand. So the child course is the one that's going or cross-listed into the parent course. So here I am in the child course. I'm going to scroll all the way down and all the way to the left-hand side, you're going to click on your settings. You're going to go all the way up, click on your sections, and here... You're gonna click on child one. And as soon as you click on the course, you will have an option to cross list this course. So let's go ahead and click on cross list. I'm going to paste the number and I'm gonna click anywhere on the screen. And here 
As you can see, the name of the course pops up. I am cross-listing my child one into parent one, and I'm gonna click cross-list, and it says section successfully cross-listed. Now, when I go back to my dashboard, let me move myself back here, scroll all the way down. As you can see, the child course or child one is missing. Now let's go into my parent course, scroll all the way down, move myself again, click on settings and let's go back to sections here and as you can see this parent course has child one and parent one so i have two sections in this course so whatever you update in this course will automatically be trickled into the other sections now you can have multiple sections cross-listed into the parent section so let's go back to my dashboard here and let's say I want to cross list my child two into parent one. I'm gonna click on the course, go all the way down, click on settings, click on sections, click on the course. In here, I'm gonna click on cross list this section. And I'm going to enter the course number and click anywhere on the white screen, make sure and confirm that's the course you want to cross list into and click cross list this section. Now let's go back to the dashboard, move myself up here. And as you can see that both the child courses are missing. Let's click on parent course, scroll all the way down to settings, click on sections, and as you can see, this parent course has two sections, child one and child two. Now, let's just say you accidentally put the child two into parent one, and now you want to put child two into parent two. Don't worry. Click on the course, and here you can say recross list this course. So all you have to do is click on recross list, enter the parent two. You know what? Let me go ahead and copy the course. So I went ahead and copied the course code for parent two. And here I want to change my child two into parent two. So I'm gonna, let me go back again. Settings, sections, child two. I accidentally put child two into child one. I'm going to go ahead and recross list this and enter the parent two code. Click anywhere and as you can see, now I have the name of the parent two or the course name and click cross list. So you do have an option to cross list and re cross list the courses just in case you accidentally put one course into the other. Now let's go back to the dashboard and click on parent two, click on sections, and here I have child two in parent two and I have child one in parent one. But keep in mind, you cannot cross list your sections if you have any student submissions. You may wanna do this before the semester starts and you can always cross list and re cross list your courses. I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please make sure you like and subscribe. And if you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so. And do not forget to comment in the comment section below. And let me know if you have a favorite tip that you want to share with me. I will leave a link in the description box below for Microsoft Teams, Canvas, and technology playlists. Do not forget to check them out. Like always, happy teaching and please take care of yourself.